I'm here again with Lee Cooperman, uh, CEO and founder of Omega Advisors. Uh, Lee, what do you think um, the hedge fund industry in general is like now? If you if you had to give you know give a young person advice who wants to go into the hedge fund space or be another uh, Lee Cooperman, what sort of advice would you give them? So you know you have an aptitude for the business is number one. Uh, don't think about the business for money. Think about it. What do you enjoy doing? Do you enjoy looking at numbers? Do you enjoy analyzing numbers, spreadsheets? Are you good with a personal computer? Do you understand statistics, basically? Uh, can you write well because you have to communicate your thoughts in writing to somebody like myself? My analysts here, 15 of them, they can't get anything in the portfolio without writing up a report. So can you write a report? You know, do numbers speak to you? Uh, when I started the business in 92, uh, people would say, you know, you're a financially comfortable guy. Why are you even doing this? And I said, I'm doing it because this is what I enjoy doing, okay? And I'm going to do it as long as three conditions exist. Number one, uh, basically, I'm healthy, okay? Uh, uh, number two, uh, I'm generating re acceptable returns. I don't want anybody feeling sorry for me. I don't, I don't have to suffer in, in public. I can suffer in private. And number three, I'm having a certain amount of fun. You know, if you do what you love and love what you do, and you have a bit of luck in life, you're bound to be successful. There's always been this debate, CFA, MBA, you got both. What are your thoughts? Do you think the CFA is more valuable as a money manager or the MBA? In my case, the MBA, because the MBA created a path. Mm -hmm. Whereas, I mean, to get really specific, uh, uh, I started working at Xerox for $7,000 a year. I was at Xerox for one year. I decided to take a leave of absence and go back to school full time. When I was interviewing for a job after, you know, during the la my last semester at Columbia, I got a job offer from Goldman Sachs for $13,500 to start. Now, essentially, I was on a trimester program. It was 16 months. I worked right through the summer. I had a six month old child that I could not afford to stretch out. I didn't have any money. So, 16 months in school almost doubled my income. So the rate of return was enormous, and it put me on a, a terrific growth path. Now, Lee, regarding politics, I know that you got some very strong views from a political standpoint. <laughs> Not really. It, here's a question for you. If you, if you took all of our po politicians and put them aside. Um, well, that's a good idea. <laughs> who would you like to see as president of the United States? You know, I'm essentially uh, socially liberal and fiscally conservative. So I, I would not vote for any Republican, frankly, that does not disavow this fixation on social issues. You know, I'm heterosexual. If somebody has a gay orientation, that's their business. It's not for me to judge. I'm pro-choice. If somebody's pro-life, I respect that. Not for me to judge. Okay, I want, uh, I want the Republican Party to stay out of these social issues. The young people don't relate to it, and the young people don't care, and I understand where the young people are coming from, and I agree. So I have to see uh, how these politicians respond. And do you think that uh, any politician can really fix uh, a lot of the issues that we have facing us today from health care to Social Security? I mean, it's, yeah, we got some I, real I, big to, problems. We have to have more cooperation, you know. I mean, uh, the, the problem is uh, we've had a very divided Congress, and the entire burden of dealing with the problems created in 2008 has fallen on the shoulders of the Federal Reserve Board. So they've produced interest rates, which make it very difficult for the average person to generate any return on their savings. Mm -hmm. uh, but they had to get us out of the hole, and I think that uh, Mr. Bernanke determined that the, he had to create growth and employment. And the best way to do that was to create wealth, which creates consumption, and the consumption creates jobs. So and the best way to create wealth was through the mechanism of getting the stock market up. The trouble is, you know, the vast bulk of stocks are not owned by the average Joe. The vast bulk of stocks are owned by a handful of people, uh, myself included. And so we've prospered mightily. Now, the general economy has benefited. House prices are up. Employment is up. But uh, if we had a better mix of fiscal and monetary policy, we could have maybe uh, not done as drastic drop in rates as uh, we've seen. Uh, but um, for some reason, we can't seem to get together. I don't want to blame the president because his blame, you know, falls on both sides. Uh, Lee, you've been a huge believer in giving back. You, you've made a lot and you've given a lot back. Tell us about your philosophy. You know, the way I've thought it through is there's only four things you can do with money. One is you can consume it. And I've been blessed with a decently high income. 
that unless I was an art collector, I uh, could not consume my income. And I'm not an art collector. I mean, you can recently a Picasso sold for $190 million. So if you started collecting high-end art, you could uh, run out of money very quickly. Uh, I'm not a clothes horse for obvious reasons. Uh, um, I work long hours, so I don't have a lot of free time to consume money. I'm married to a wonderful woman for 52 years. She's very purposeful. She's been an educator for 35 years, working with learning disabled, neurologically impaired children. And so basically, uh, she's not a consumer. So we couldn't consume our wealth. The second thing you do is you give it all to your children. And I think that's destructive. Uh, you don't want to take away from your kids the opportunity to achieve success on their own. So I've given my kids a rational sum of money, more than I would like to have given, but I've managed the money and it grew and it was theirs when they invested, so it's theirs to keep. But they're very purposeful, they've achieved, they didn't grow up knowing they were rich, and they weren't rich when they were growing up, I didn't have much money. Uh, and so I believe you give my kids a rational sum of money. Your third use of money is you give it to the government in the form of taxation, or the fourth is you recycle it back into society. Mm -hmm. And so my decision is uh, I've given my kids their inheritance and I'm gonna recycle uh, at le no less than half of my money on my own. So I've made leadership gifts to Columbia Business School, to Hunter College, to St. Barbara's Medical Center. I created uh, Cooperman College Scholars, a program where if you live in Essex County, New Jersey, uh, you uh, enroll voluntarily in a free three-week program, pre-college program designed by Franklin and Marshall College, but they agreed to make it available to New Jersey higher education institutions and you're academically qualified. I'm very big on equal opportunity. I'm not trying to force equal outcomes because people have different work ethics, different levels of ability. So if you live in Essex County, New Jersey, you take this program, you're academically qualified, and you have a financial need unmet by government, I will give you $10,000 a year for four years towards your college tuition. And we started the program nine months ago. Uh, I have a board that we put together. Uh, and we're professional workers that are doing a fabulous job. We had 300 applicants, and we accepted 77. Wow. So, uh, and it'd be my fondest hope that I expand in this program, that I give more money. I made a $25 million commitment to that one. Um, and so, uh, again, it's the four uses of money. So uh, my commitment is to uh, give away half my money in my lifetime, and the other half I'm going to put into a foundation as my legacy to my children, my grandchildren, my daughter-in-laws, where I would hope we would cohesively keep the family together by getting together and uh, giving money to worthy organizations. And I don't intend to control things in the grave. I'm going to give my kids the flexibility to support what they think should be supported. What do you like to do when you're not managing money? Uh, I'm a pretty boring guy, in all honesty. Uh, I play golf about ten times a year. Uh, nine holes is my maximum intention span. Uh, I walk with my older brother uh, pretty much every weekend, uh, two and a half, three miles a day. Uh, I read, uh, research, um, and uh, I've maintained my swimming pool, you know, put chlorine in the skimmers and clean out the pool. You know, I mean, I'm basically, uh, uh, I don't have any, like, deep, deep hobbies. Uh, I'm, I'm pretty... Uh, Pretty narrowly based. I got you. Well, in terms of golf, that's what I should be doing is nine holes a day. In fact, I should give up the game entirely. I would say it's a, I consider it a colossal waste of time, but you know, it's social and uh, I'm a member of two golf clubs, one in Florida, one in New Jersey, and uh, so I play periodically. But I, I enjoy what I do, and you know, given what's going on in the world, you, you never have enough time to process everything. Um, Lee, you're talking to the graduating class at uh, Columbia or Hunter for that matter, what sort of advice would you give young people coming out of school today? Well, the first thing I'd say is, you know, to be successful in life, I think uh, Henry Ford said the best way to make a lot of money is not think about making money. Uh, Warren Buffett says go to work for somebody you respect, admire, tap dance to work, and the rest will take care of itself. You know, I didn't go into this business to make a lot of money. Uh, uh, I went into this business because I enjoy investing. Go to a, try to get into a, a business you love, but also try to get into a good business mm -hmm. that's going to prosper because you want... You know, rising tide lifts all the ships, a receding tide lowers all the ships. But it, it, hard work never killed anybody, um, and so you'll be prepared to work hard. Uh, you'll find the harder you work, the luckier you'll get. Um, and get yourself a good education from a good school. Um, and, uh, and that's what I'm, the, a piece of advice I give to anyone listening to this tape. Don't be threatened by strong people. Be benefited by strong people. 
That's what makes you better, to have the very best people working in association with yourself. Again, I'm here with Lee Cooperman, CEO and founder of Omega Advisors. Lee, cannot thank you enough for taking the time to sit down with me today. Really, really appreciate it. And all I can say is I wish you continued success. Uh, my, my pleasure, and thanks for the opportunity to express my thoughts.